Hey, raindrops. Yes, come through. We got merch. Finally, Carlos King is giving y'all merch. We got raindrops. Allegedly. Come on. Allegedly mugs. Allegedly t-shirts. We have it all. Make sure you go on carloskingshop.com. That's right. carloskingshop.com. Pick it up. Tell a friend. Phone a friend. And let's celebrate this all together. Now get into this video and make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. And hit what? Yes, the notification button so you don't miss an episode. See ya. One of a kind. Carlos King. <laughs> the girls are about to gag, honey. Oh, this is amazing. Is it good? No. Yeah, it We're here to make you comfortable, bitch. This is the land of Jocelyn Hernandez. And what I have to say is this. You know I love you. Don't cry, bitch. Ah! <laughs> I, I have to say, you have changed since the day I met you, 2012. 12, the, begin the beginning, right? The, begin the love beginning. Oh my gosh, almost 2011. Yes, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season one. Mm -hmm. The way you came in, Jocelyn, I, wanna, I want people to know this. I was the co-EP of the show. We lost DJ Drama. Did you know, you know the story? No. So let me tell you what, what was going on. Who is DJ Drama? Do you not know DJ Drama? It must have been before my time. Bitch, he's still around. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but what happened? Who, who, if, if I see this man in the street, I wouldn't know who this man was in the street. So we were casting for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season one. The network thought DJ Drama and his then wife or girlfriend were going to be like the biggest stars on the show. True story. True story? We had Stevie and Mimi. We had, we had Erica and Scrap. We had Rashida and Kirk. Carly Red. No, no, we didn't have Carly Red. Bullshit. Bitch, you stupid. <laughs> we didn't have Carly Red, we had Kay Michelle. Okay, so long story short, DJ Drama and his fiance or wife dropped out. And the network was freaking out. But and why did they drop out? Change their mind. Reality TV ain't for everybody. You gotta be built strong to do this type of show. Absolutely. And because at that time, DJ Drama, although you're saying he's before your time, honey, in 2012, he was a big name in Atlanta. Okay. Okay, so losing him was a big deal to them. I kept saying like, y'all sleeping on this Stevie Mimi storyline because they got something going on with this other girl. Long story short, Long story short, I will never forget the day you walked into the office. Is that old green Versace? You remember, bitch? Bitch been getting money. Before TV, bitch been getting money. Green Versace down, bitch Manolo Blanco shoes. Long hair, don't care, 40 inches. <laughs> you heard, bitch. The princess is in the building. Y'all bitches bow down, bitch. Honey, we bowed down Thank and we you. said, here you go. <laughs> Before J-Lo and her little green dress, Versace dress, Jocelyn came with that mother sealed the deal. And the show hasn't been the same since. Miss Mona Man told me to go get my three looks for green screen. And I was like, I'll be right back. And I came back within an hour and the <laughs> bitches could not take me. Could not take me. So let's go back. How did you land the spot on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Was it Stevie who brought you to Mona? How did it all work out? So I was stripping at Onyx in Atlanta. So long ago. I, <laughs> I know. Was, I was shaking my body, <laughs> throwing my ass, shaking my tits, spread, spreading my ass open, licking my tongue out of all these and getting my money. And I had a homegirl that was a stripper. She was an older chick, right? She's probably still living in Atlanta Blue. And she had a daughter that was like a little bit younger than me at that time. And the daughter could sing. And I was like, damn, I need to find a, a producer to work in the studio with, with the daughter, because I'm a manager. Because before I started doing Love and Hip Hop, I wanted to manage people. I, I did music and I wanted to do music, but I always felt like I was a better like 
handler than anything. Okay. Like I could handle business, I could do my shit, I could make things pop off, and I can seal a deal. And so when I was stripping one night, my homeboy GB, I was like, GB, you know, a producer that can work with me, and this girl, I'm managing this young girl, she's a singer. He was like, oh yeah, I know my homeboy Stevie J. I was like, okay, well, who the is that? Because <laughs> of course, I was like 23 at the time. I was like, well, who the is, who is Stevie J? You know, he was already in his late 30s, you know, doing his thing or mm -hmm. his job or his career. And I didn't know who he was, but then when I met him, you know, uh, GB, this was within a week that I got to Atlanta. Whoa. I was 23. I was like, okay, I'm not stripping anymore. Like, I started at 17. I'm 23. I need to really take my career seriously and figure out what I'm going to do. I always wanted to do music, but, you know, Brian McKinney, my homeboy, always wanted to sign me to his label. He wanted me to. I mean, the music has been biting me in my ass and following me my whole life. Anyways, met Stevie. Within, like, three days, he took me to Mona and Love and Hip Hop. Wait a second. I didn't even f*** him before he took me to Mona. Like, he ain't got no pussy, he ain't got no hair. He put his ass on me in the studio or whatever, and obviously nothing happened, because, honey, I'm a lady, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm a lady. Um, and yeah, within a week, when I met him, I was like, hey, listen, I met him in the strip club, GB brought him by. Uh -huh. Within two days, GB was like, this is my homeboy, Stevie J. He said he'll work with you, whatever, whatever. So I brought the girl, and you know what he told, he told me? He was like, I don't want to work with the girl. I want to work with you. You're the superstar. I was like, well, look, I'm not really trying to do music. I'm just really trying to just, like, manage the situation and just, you know, get my money like that. Because, you know, I've been stripping from 17 to 23 years old. Like, I don't want to keep being doing that hustle. Now I got to perform and just keep performing and performing. Like, let me manage something. That's how I met that fool. Three days later, he brought me to Mona. Then I met you. And she, like, I met her, and, like, within five minutes, she was like, go get your clothes. No, and listen, I will give Mona her, her props. Mona came to the office after meeting you and said, I found her. What you don't know is, because DJ Drama and his wife backed out, they felt like we were missing stars. Mona met you, came back to the office and said, I have met a superstar. And we were like, Ta -da. Oh. we were like, okay, who it is? <laughs> and she was saying, apparently, um, she's Stevie artist. There could be something going on. I don't know, but I'm bringing her to the office. She's bringing green screen clothes. Carlos, you interview her. You came in with that. Do you remember the outfit you wore, bitch? You wore the, the nipple cover. Yes, yes, bitch. <laughs> with the hair, honey. Looking like Cena, bitch. <laughs> I was looking good, bitch. You were amazing. So, but wait, you mean to tell me you and Stevie were not intimate at the time you met Mona? No, I only met Mona like a week after I met Stevie. I just, just met Mo uh, Stevie. Literally, it took Stevie a week to take me to Love and Hip Hop. I met Stevie in 2012. I met you guys in 2012. Yeah. But it was like a week or two apart, not even two weeks apart. So what was he the He knew deal? I was a superstar. He was like, I want to do music with you. He was like, you ever did music? I said, well, you know, Brian been trying to get me to do music for so many years. This person wanted me to do music, that person. But I don't really want to be an artist. I kind of always ran away from it. And he just really got me to do it. He saw the star in you. Yeah. One thing about Stevie, he does, he, he can see a star. He worked with, with Mariah Carey. He worked with some of the biggest names, Biggie, everybody. Puffy, everybody. Puffy, every, every everybody that's anybody. When you got the job being a loving hip hop, did that make you want to be intimate with Stevie J as, as sort of a thank you to him? Can I tell you something? I never really liked him at the beginning, but I'm like that. I never really liked anybody at the beginning. They have to, they have to make me like them. Because I've always been the creator of the situation. Mm -hmm. I've always been the you know, you got to pay me. You got to buy me diamonds. You were you the boss me, in the situation. You got to give me money. Yeah. If you want to smell my pussy, you got to put 20000 on that table. Back in those days, now it's more like $200 billion, You see? <laughs> this pussy went up. But, uh, <laughs> but, like, you know, I've always been, like, the creator, the creator of the whole situation. So, for me, it's like, I really don't see a guy and be like, oh, I like him. No. I, I, I've never been that way. So, I ain't really like him. I thought he was kind of lame. I thought he was kind of just like a regular guy. I didn't know who the 
You are Stevie J, bitch. I'm Jocelyn. I didn't know who you were. Uh, and so he just got me to do this. So I, I, I feel like because he opened that door for the music, even though people was trying to get me to do it before, I feel like it was easier for me to be like, with him. And whether I liked him or not, mentally and physically, then I wasn't really thinking about that. I was thinking about how I can utilize this situation to get to the next level because ultimately that's what everybody should do, him and I, you or anyone else. Mm -hmm. When did you guys start having a sexual relationship? I mean, right after. Though I met Mona, obviously. Because then we were hanging out, we was having a good time. One thing I could say about Stevie, I had a great time we hanging out with him. We used to party down. <laughs> party down. I had a really good time hanging out with him. Like, you know, 23, 24, 25, mm -hmm. 26. It was awesome. I used to have a good time. And then, like, obviously, when you meet someone and you just have such a good... And you know his birthday is the day before mine. Yes. So we always, for years, celebrated our birthdays together. I've always gave him better gifts than he ever gave me, but that's neither here or there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had an amazing time. And, um, yeah, after I met Mona, then... You know, of course, we started around, and then we just get around, and never would I thought would thought I think I was going to have a baby right that full. So before we get into the to, to the beautiful Bonnie Bella, did you know he was with Mimi when you guys were dating? Not at the beginning. We didn't date that long. Remember, this is all in a matter of two weeks, fourteen days. So I knew she was around, but you know, he was like, I ain't with her. And why would I think he with her when he now got me? So I wasn't really like knowing the truth. Neither did I care at that point. Yeah. Because at this point, I'm like, bitch, I'm about to make a song and bitch, I'm out of here. I'm about to be big, ho, and you still gonna be Molly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, in my mind, I'm not like worrying about that. Mm hmm. She's a great woman. She's raised a great daughter. Yes. She's, she's beautiful, they both are. So more power to her, you feel me? What happened to where you, Stevie, and Mimi had a threesome? Was that before we started filming or during filming? I can't tell you that answer because it's coming out in my book. Ooh! Okay. So if I tell you that answer, then you won't buy the book. Okay. And everybody else won't buy it either because they already know. Okay. So I have to save that for the book. But I promise you, I'm going to send you a copy first. Okay, okay. I promise you because I'm so ready to like tell my story. I started to just keep doing shows. I got the cabaret, mm -hmm. working on some other stuff. But I want the people to get a little bit personal. And I don't want to do it when I get older. I want them to have my youth mm -hmm. from my 20s and my 30s. And then when I turn 50 and 60, have another one. It's like a, it's like a collectible. You know, I'm ready, mm -hmm. for, I'm ready for that. So I can talk then about the threesome. Well, answer this, was it, was it good? I've had better head. <laughs> she gave you head. I, I gotta, I gotta let you read it. Because <laughs> if, I, if I, tell, I tell you, if I tell you, that's part of my story. If I tell you, okay, okay. Like, it's like, it's like I'm missing potentially a great sale. Like if I tell the world now, and it's like five, ten million viewers in a week, who gonna buy the book? You are such a business woman. I'm giving I you the tea all right here, right now. I gotta wait some. I gotta keep some secrets for that, for that for that big page right there, because baby, I'm talking. And well, I'm not keeping no tea back. Well, the good thing is, as people are watching this interview, they're going to buy this book now. They have to. I mean, how could you not? I came from the ghetto with nothing, from Puerto Rico, no money, no opportunity, and look at me now. How could you not want to buy that for someone and give a young girl an opportunity for her to potentially become great? How could you not? Mm -hmm. One thing that happened during the first season of Love and Hip Hop, I want to go into your childhood. I remember working with you. I have to let the world know this. Season one, Jocelyn, humble. You showed up on time. You were so grateful for the opportunity. You listened to the producers. You were like, what do you guys want? My favorite moment from season one that never aired is when your mom and your stepdad came to visit you. And you spoke to them about being young. And it was such an emotional scene because this is the thing. 
And I was so mad they never aired it. I, and I, I'm going to tell you something that you probably don't know. We all fought, fought for that to make air. So what happened? The owners of the company at that time said it didn't fit into the, the episode. And I will say this to you, Mona, myself, Stephanie Gale, everybody said this woman is so vivacious and she's, she's all these things. We have to humanize her. Yeah. Seeing her talk to her mother about, I was a young girl and you let me run away and you let me, I had to fiend for myself. And your mom doesn't speak English and you were speaking in Spanish. Um, in Spanish. And it was sort of like they blamed you. And you kept saying, I was a teenage girl and you guys let me run away. Um, listen, people can say what they want about you. What I know for a fact is this. You are who you are because of what was happening to you as a teenage girl. And how, and I'm gonna put words in your mouth, your mom choosing a man over you, allegedly, right? Because she's not here to defend herself. We wanted that to be seen because I felt like it would explain why Jocelyn is tough and why she feels the need to go hard. Will that explain who you are as you, as you talk about your childhood like that? And I see you getting emotional too. Well, you know, I, had a, I feel like I had a really rough childhood because, I, you know, I feel like I was never given an opportunity and like from my mom or my family. I feel like I was never given an opportunity. And I just feel like a lot of moms don't take responsibility for them not taking care or guiding their kids the way they need to be guided or the way they need to be dealt with. And I just felt like I could have been so much further in life if she was just a better mom. I mean, you're talking about a lady that has six kids with five different baby daddies, mm. my mom. Like, I can sit up here and, and say whatever, but the proof is in the pudding. You have six kids by five different baby daddies. And you really never just been there for your child or even taught them anything. I mean, she doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't speak English. I've tried. I've spent a lot of money. I've spent a lot of time. But I just feel like she just failed me, and not just me, her other kids, by not giving us an opportunity to be the best we could be. Did she know how to do that? Maybe not. But I'm not going to give her that excuse and I'm not going to give her a pass because I feel like some of the country's people in the world that have nothing raise their, ch their children a certain way. And I just feel like I just have to grow up so fast by myself without anybody's help. And I just think it's so fucked up that a lot of mothers let their kids do that. Like, there is no, there is, it, it's just unfortunate. You know, it's unfortunate and I just, you know, I, I'm not mad, I'm, I guess I'm getting a little emotional because you know, I don't really get a person asking me anything like that. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't really have to talk about it. But you know, it's just sad that a mom will have a, a child and a mom will let you run away. Because if your child is leaving your home, it's because you're not doing something right. Mm -hmm. Don't blame this on your kid. What's happening in your house that your kid wants to leave your house so badly any given day? Why? My daughter not going to wake up any day and say, I want to leave my mama's house. Why would she want to leave the comfort of her mother's house? She got her own room, computers, iPads, food, clothes, entertainment, the beach downstairs. Why would she want to wake up and run away? She's got me. She's got my husband. We're constantly teaching her, taking her places, taking her to a... She went to New York with me for a month to film the cabaret. She went to Puerto Rico for 15 days for vacation. She went to California for a week. She, the whole summer she's out. That's... I'm giving my daughter time. I'm teaching her how to be a great mother when she does have kids. That's how you are a good mother or a good parent. Not by just having a child burdening and just living in my, around the house like a bunch of baby kids and you're just doing your thing whatever that thing is which is nothing because mm -hmm. if it's not taking care of your kids it's nothing 
We could continue to talk about it. Can I call my makeup? I need yeah, a Yeah, no, call makeup, call makeup. Uh, we'll call him in. You got me emotional, bitch. I know, I'm sorry. No, the, the, the thing Pie. is... No, the <laughs> thing is... Well, let's, let's get makeup in, Ocho. The thing is this. I just know that there's more to you that the world hasn't seen. And that's the reason why I love you. And I I'm going to talk more about my mom in the book. Yeah. Because um, I... Obviously, I'm just telling you, like, mm -hmm. a short story, a right. long story, a short... Yeah, yeah. In a short time. Right. But my book will say on how I feel and, and the mistakes that I, I think I'm a good mom. I actually, I think I'm a great mom. Am I perfect? No. No mother's I don't think nobody's perfect. perfect. No mother's perfect. I have to, well, I'm a perfect mother. I'm not a perfect person. Oh. It's two different things. I'm a perfect mother, but I'm not a perfect person. And we see how much Bonnie Bella loves up on you. I mean, she's living around love. Everything is happiness for her. That's why I just never understood the woman that really does not know how to take care of their kids and give them love, give them time, teach them, show them, guide them, love them, and do everything that they need, you know? Mm -hmm. Bitch, you couldn't wait to ask me the question later. I didn't know you <laughs> It's all good. No, it's all good. <laughs> this bitch want to ask me the question. No, the it's all good, bitch. Look at you, though. They're coming, they're, coming, they're coming in. If they can't save my makeup, you're dead. You are going to be fine, bitch. You are <laughs> I'm not. No more gorgeous with tears. We're, we're past that. I oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I had to get it together. Call no, it you though. got it together. You asked me too many. You went back. That's OK. Now we're going to go forward. Again, I want people to know the real you. And we'll get into later stuff, but I was there from the beginning. I remember you got emotional when you got your first check from being a love and hip hop. And you said, y'all don't realize this is my first check. Because prior to that, like you said, you were stripping. That's cash. There's no paycheck. I want the world to know how humble you were when you started out. You were so appreciative of the small things. Did you know? that Love and Hip Hop Atlanta would change your life. Yeah. You did. Yeah. It was my first check, so I was very emotional because I've never had a real job in my life. The only job I had was being a stripper. So I didn't have, I've never gotten paid or clocked in or got a check or had a payment or went to the bank to catch a check. Everything was, I had a bank account, but everything was cash. So, yeah, I knew it would change my, you know, remember when I told the world I'm an international superstar? Mm -hmm. That was like the, why are you laughing so hard, because bitch? Because I remember you what saying it. What is this it. so funny? Because you said it. You manifested this life for you. People felt like, bitch, please. <laughs> right? Like, bitch, shut the f You're like, I'm an international superstar. And I here we it. are. You From are the one. From the womb, I was an international superstar. My mama did a lot of wrong things, but the only right thing that she did was have me. What scene in your memory from season one is your favorite scene that you watch that makes you laugh? And I'm gonna tell you mine. Okay. I would have to go with the high maid. I see you got on your maid, I feel like you always do. Because like, it was something that honestly, I did not write that in script. Now I'm a writer. I wrote Jocelyn's Cabaret. I write my music. I'm, that's what I do first. I started, I tell Bonnie all the time, Bonnie, I am, I was a better writer than you are when I was five, but I'm a writer. She's an astronaut. She wants to go to, to, the, to the sky. She's a builder. She built these big spaceships and all type of shit. So, you know, everybody do what they do. I did not write or thought about that. I just see her with the teacher cleaning. I knew she had a maid um, company and I was like, hey, maid, I see you got on your maid outfit like you always do. She said, bitch, I got on a t-shirt. I said, bitch, you got on a maid outfit. Because, bitch, if you got on a t-shirt, then you got on a maid outfit. I'm sorry, Carlos. Today you got on a t-shirt. Ah, <laughs> am I a maid? You might be a maid, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> bitch, go fetch me a mother <laughs> break. <laughs> Are you calling me Lowe's the maid, bitch? You, bitch, I'm thirsty. Go fetch a drink. <laughs> You are one of a hey. kind. Yes, babe. That's my favorite. What's your favorite? My favorite, you, you're going to laugh at this. But you better the give first, me a good one. <laughs> no, I'm about to, first of all, you have a lot to choose from. Let's be, let's be clear. You have a lot to choose from. My favorite that just makes me laugh every time I see it is 
is a tie with two, but they both involve Carly. Of course. It's when Carly walked into the studio and she said, where is Stevie? And you said, hello? You, you speak when you walk into a room. Now go sit down, okay? I know you got some manners. And I'm like, who is this girl? <laughs> who, who is she? And Carly did everything you told her to do. As she should, like the, like, like, like the good girl that she is when she is in front of a Don, like Ooh. the Puerto Rican princess. Cause she know, Carly know, I'm not the one, two or three. She knows, she looking good out here in the streets. I don't know what she doing for work. <laughs> she looking all right. What do you think about Carly Rae? Because at one point in time, you liked her. Hey, Raindrops, yes, come through. We got merch. Finally, Carlos King is giving y'all merch. We got Raindrops. Allegedly. Come on, allegedly mugs, allegedly t-shirts. We have it all. Make sure you go on carloskingshop.com. That's right, carloskingshop.com. Pick it up, tell a friend, phone a friend, and let's celebrate this all together. Now get into this video and make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and hit what? Yes, the notification button so you don't miss an episode. See ya. I, I still do. Okay. You know, Carly Red is one of those people that is like, you know, like, you know, like, she's like a dog. And she doesn't mean no harm. You know, dogs no. do stupid shit. They'll piss on the floor, shit on your couch. They do dumb shit. That's how Carly is. But I really think she means well. <laughs> um, I don't know why she can't keep a man. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of them bitches ain't never kept a man. I've been with every little bit of two men this whole time I've been famous. Really? Oh, bitch, don't act like I'm No, I want to know, bitch. I, no, I, I, I want to know. OK. You know you keep up with the princess. Don't I, I do. Like Stevie and Ballistics. Who else? Well, let me ask you this. A lot of people um, say you and Rick Ross had a thing. No, we never did. Never. I could take a lot of detective tests. We never had anything going. He's a really good person. He's cool. He's sweet. I've hung out with him a couple of times at his house parties that I was invited to, but no, we, we never had anything going. Listen, anybody that I have anything going with, you would know, because I'm gonna be with them for a long time. They never leave, unless I leave. When you became famous, Love & Hip Hop Atlanta was so big, everybody stopped what they were doing Monday nights at eight o'clock. I remember being at Houston's, and the waiters and everybody said, this is a true story, and I'm not, I'm not lying. This, I was in Atlanta. They closed the restaurant early because they said we have to go home to watch Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Yeah. The network celebrated all of us. They had Love & Hip Hop New York, which was still great. You had Chrissy, Yandy, Jimmy, and all those people, right? Love & Hip Hop Atlanta changed the game for the network. And you became the breakout star. When you became the biggest reality star at that time, was it hard for you dealing with fame? At the beginning, it was hard for me. It was hard for me. At the beginning, it was hard for me. Cause you know, people say a lot of things and they talk and then I think that's when, I think that's when Instagram really took off. Yes. Around like 2012. So, and then Twitter, Twitter was around before Instagram, but you know what I mean? That's when people started really tweeting and, and started really going crazy when like, I think, I think ultimately Love & Hip Hop was the, one of the main shows for like black culture or the urban culture or hip hop culture or, you know, or, 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 or Spanish Latin people like myself that are black that are like hood and Americanized culture. I think Love & Hip Hop brought that for us and it was just like a phenomenon. I think it was just like, you know, and then you being able to post or go under my picture and say this or say that or say that. It gave a lot of people voices, so it was hard for me, but I think that it trained me and it got me prepared for who I am today. Mm -hmm. I remember me and my African took you to Swiggin' Richards. Do you remember that? And, and Jonathan, the makeup artist, who, who's now on the show. Oh, honey, I seen so many big and nice asses over there. I was like, 
<laughs> it was your first time going to Swinkin' Yes! In Atlanta! I took you to Swinkin' Riches for the first time. I loved it. So did I. But I had an amazing time there. Though we had so much fun, oh, and you were just so sweet. And then I remember one thing that people said really infuriated you and Stevie. People were like, oh, she a man. People were like, Jocelyn's a man. And I knew that was so ridiculous. But did that affect you at that time? Because again, you were being famous and being talked about, and this, this was all new to you. Um, I don't really think it. Got, I don't really think it got me mad. I posted a picture of me naked. You don't remember? <laughs> yes, I do. And my was so pretty and youthful and tight and fat that every question went out the door. <laughs> they were like, "Hold up." We got this wrong. <laughs> this is all woman. Like, you remember, you remember when I posted I remember, a picture of me naked? Yes, I do. I posted a picture because that rumor came out and it kind of like, wait, hold up. Do you not see my body? Do you not see my face? Do you not see like everything about me? I'm all woman. So I posted a picture of me on Twitter naked because I just felt like the world needed to know. Was that a risky thing to do? Absolutely. But was I looking fine as all outdoors? Absolutely. <laughs> and would I do it again? Absolutely. <laughs> I would step behind my womanhood every single day, every single time. And it was capped because they daddies, they mamas, they boyfriends, they husbands, they all want to stick to me. So, you know, the media, 2012, Instagram was tough. It was crazy. It was the first, it was, it was already out, but I feel like 2012, it really just hit the fan. You were able to just go on the people pictures and say this and say that or, you know, is comment and just be like, you know, have an opinion. When you were on the show, some of your biggest battles were with Mimi. I don't think so. Who do you think it was with? I say Carly. Because I feel like they always utilize her to try to come and bring the mess to me. <laughs> where I say some of the other girls, they brought mess to me and they'll talk about me and they'll be messy towards me. But she took the cake. And you know, with Mimi, it was like, she wasn't being messy. She was like trying to figure out what was going on with what was Stevie telling her and him telling me. And I think she's a great person. Well, Carly, she don't fuck on me. She don't know anything about me. She's like, that bitch. I'm Carly and... That's Jocelyn. I got to try to bring her down. I think that she really gave me the harder time. And Carly's 20 years my senior. So she's on to the game that they feeding her to give me and throw at me. Mm -hmm. She's one of the older chicks on Love & Hip Hop that ever did Love & Hip Hop or still doing Love & Hip Hop. Uh, and she looks great. She looks beautiful. She's beautiful. She looks better than ever. She does. She looks better than ever. But I definitely feel like she gave me the harder time. I said to Mimi or anybody on Love & Hip Hop. How much did you make your first season? Do you remember? You know what? Within the first week, I went from making like $1,500 per episode to making 11000 per episode in a week. I didn't ask for them to bum me up. They bummed me up. Then second season, I was making like 15000 And then like by the end of second season, I went up to like 20000 An episode. By the end of second season, they just kept bumping me up. They was just throwing money at me. They was like, we don't want her not to come to work. So I didn't have to have no lawyer come and like re renegotiate the yeah. contract or anything. They would just bump me up. They did that for years. Do you remember the last amount you made per episode on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta? 50,000. You made 50,000 per episode? Yes. I make, I make, and now, like, if I go do a show, like, for, like, you know, like, a week, I, I, I'm sorry, like, a month, I'm, I'm going to get 1.52 million, like, 30 days, quick. So you and that's the, with a discount, because I'm staying for so long, I'm, I'm gonna making it cheaper yeah. for the networks, you know? So you were the highest paid star on VH1. Uh, probably on Love & Hip Hop while I was there, yeah. While I was there. I don't know now, I haven't done Love & Hip Hop in such a long time, but yeah, and my pickup bonuses in Love & Hip Hop was like $250,000, $300,000, dollars 300000 every season. You had a pickup bonus? I, I didn't come to work unless I had a pickup bonus. I have a pickup, listen, put it this way, I own Jocelyn's Cabaret, yes. shout out to Lemmy, 
He gives me pickup bonuses. He gives me bonuses to come to work. So, like, I own the show. I sick of the producer. I created it. I produce it. I write it. But I still got to pick up bonus to come to work because, you know, he wants to keep me happy. I got to do my job. I got to come to work and I got to be happy. So I've always put in my contracts where they have to give me a pick up bonus so I can come to work, do my job. And, you know, I get my back end. But in the front end, you got to make me happy, too. What people don't know about you, you are a smart businesswoman. And what I know that people don't know, excuse me, is you negotiated your own contracts. Like, you would say, I would never get this scene. It was you and, um, uh, his, his name is skipping my brain. But it was you and Stevie. They wanted to do a record deal with you because everybody wanted to be in the business Acon? of Jocelyn. It, who, who was Akon's partner? Yeah, Akon's partner. Uh, uh, some of the D. Divine Stevens. Divine Stevens. Divine Stevens. And yeah. you said, uh uh, sign here and initial there. And I said, what does this girl know about initial there? And I said, she really knows her stuff. You are more than likely the highest paid VH1 star in history. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. I'm the number one reality TV star paid right now. Like, right now. I stream my cabaret in monthly in perpetuity. When I die, Bonnie gets that. When she dies, her daughter gets that. That's how I did my contract. I own my ass, baby. Don't nobody own this. Why did you leave Love & Hip Hop Atlanta? I think the last reunion, when I went to the last reunion, I just felt like I had been there for like seven seasons or six seasons. I think I, I stopped mm -hmm. like in the sixth season. I honestly feel, Carlos, like it was time for me to like try to do something different before I got too old and too played out, too tired. Like I could have stayed there until I was 45 if I wanted to. Like some of the ladies that are still there that been there for longer than I ever was, you know, like 10 seasons, 12 mm -hmm. seasons. I feel like I needed to elevate and I always had Jocelyn's Cabaret in mind. I always wanted to do music. I always wanted to do TV. So I feel like, you know what? The last reunion after I had Bonnie, I'm like, it's time to grow. It's time to elevate. It's time to move to another dimension. And whether they believe in me or not, I got to believe in me. And that's why I just said it's time to go. I just felt like I wasn't going to elevate myself if I would have kept going to work on Love and Hip Hop as much money as I was making. I could have been making a million dollars an episode on Love and Hip Hop to this day. And I know they would have paid me because it would have kept bringing the, the viewership book. I choose me. I choose to maybe make a little best, a little bit less money for a little bit amount of time to grow my own personal business than to just keep making the man rich and wealthy and I get nothing in return but an episodic fee. And look at all these actors and actresses, they're all on strike. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to work. People in California, all these actors and these actresses that have been doing this for many, many years, they can't even afford to eat or pay their rent. That's up. I just feel like if I stay in love and hip hop one more year or one more episode, or one more second or one more day, and I left. I mean, I had money, you know, I had 150,000, 200,000 in my bank account, but that ain't shit. I spent $100,000 in a week buying clothes for videos or doing this for filming or whatever it is. But shit, I was like, shit, I'm gonna have to pinch and penny up until I come out with an idea to make money, but I'm not staying on Love & Hip Hop anymore. I don't care if they give me 100000 an episode. I can't do it. And they, did they offer you more money to stay? They offered me everything to stay. I could have went back. I could have stayed. I just didn't want to go back. I did not go back. When I left, and they paid me for the reunion, which they didn't want to pay me. I sent my lawyer to New York, to the VH1 building, and they paid me. Because it's, honestly, I went. You feel me? You put me on the episode. I just didn't go in there inside of the room and spoke to everybody else. I just felt like it was a waste of time. I looked at too beautiful, too youthful, too sexy to just hear for them to keep kicking me down. And I had just had Bonnie and I just wanted more. That's really good for you. What is your relationship like now with Mona? You know what, I don't have a relationship with her. I don't know, like, I, first of all, I don't ever see her anywhere. Y'all don't run into each other. It's so random, I never ran into her outside. Never ran into her. But I mean, you know what comes around, goes around and comes around and goes back around again. And like, I haven't seen her. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know where she's at. Um, I don't feel any type of way about her though. Do you thank her for the opportunity? 
I definitely thank her for the opportunity. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank a few people for the opportunity, even, even Stevie for the opportunity. Uh, VH1 for the opportunity. It's certain people that I thank for the opportunity, even Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm grown now. And it's like, if you're not gonna be here next to me to see me grow and be here and grow with me and help me grow, like you have, a lot of people don't know you're the reason why I have Jocelyn's Cabaret. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. I don't think you tell anybody, oh, I'm the reason why Jocelyn is. Cause that's not me. Well, the thing is this, one thing about me, and you, and you know this to be true, I, I'm here to be of service, right? I love making stars. I love helping people. I love having people's dreams come true. I don't feel the need to tell the world what I do because I don't do it for that. I do it for the love. So when it came to Jocelyn's Cabaret, well, let me go back. I remember when you left Love, love and Hip Hop. And years ago, like what, seven years ago? Yeah. Yeah, that I called almost, you? Almost seven years ago, and yep. you called me. I was driving to Miami with Bonnie in the backseat. I took my Jeep wagon, I drove to Miami. You were also in the car driving somewhere. Yes. And I was like, hey, Carlos, what are you doing? And I'm like, you know, we talked. That was so crazy. That was like literally seven years ago. It was seven years ago. And I was like, you free free? You said, yes, I'm leaving. And I said, wait, are you sure? You said, Carlos, I'm done. I, she said, I'm dealing with some legal stuff now to get out of my contract, but, but I'm done. Give me two weeks. I was free. When it's official, and, I'm a, and we're gonna talk about business. And we came up with Jocelyn's Cabaret because I remember saying to you, there's something interesting about you having the ability to go back to your own stumping grounds, if you will, but having a cabaret to where you work because you said to me, you love being a performer. And I said, I believe in you. And then we had a pilot at WeTV. And I remember you and I wish both- you got, Wish you got the pilot done. You got yeah. the budget, you got the pilot done. I don't really think people know that. I don't really think people know that you are the reason why I have the cabaret. Carlos is the reason why I have the cabaret. I'm looking at the camera right now, because I need <laughs> you guys to know. Carlos King right here, the more tears coming down, is the reason why uh -huh. I have the cabaret. Because a lot of people think it's just like, you know, I did it, but I was blowing you out, calling you like, listen, I need you to find this nigga Lemmy. Remember how you digging yeah. for that fool? And you ran into him at the park. At the dog park. I ran into Lem Lemio, who is the CEO of Zeus, and I ran into, my, ran into him at the dog park. We're both from Detroit. And I said, hey. That is incredible. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And I said, I have Jocelyn Hernandez. He was so excited to meet you. Jocelyn and Ballistics flew to LA, because at the time, me and Lemmy both lived in LA. Jocelyn flew to LA. We had a meeting at the SLS Hotel. Jocelyn came in with, 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 with the vision. Ballistics took Bonnie back to the room. I want people to know you are your own businesswoman. Jocelyn carried the meeting. I was there for support and we were partners, but you sold it yourself. You, 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 he saw the vision and he had paperwork ready for you. And you said, I ain't signing nothing right now. I need to go home and read it. And I was happy to make the introduction. The reason why we weren't able to do it together is because at the time I was working on some other stuff. And I remember you were Wish so- Wish I was so upset. You were so was mad. Like, oh my gosh, how you were so can mad. I not have Carlos with me Yeah. in this project? Yeah, yeah, you were so mad. You said, what I'm gonna do? And I said, you have it. You just continue believing in yourself. You have it. You are going to do something great with Jocelyn's Cabaret, and I'm happy to report you own the intellectual property. You, reality stars need to learn from you in terms of really owning your own business. I, I, I was talking to another star who shall remain nameless, and I said to her, it's not getting back on TV to do that. People need to follow Jocelyn's route. Jocelyn owns it. Um, she made sure she got her just due. Lemmy gave you a cute signing bonus. I love Lemmy, and he It was, because he, he said, can y'all split this? And I said, it's all hers. I, 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 want, I don't want a dime from this pot. This is all your money. I walked he wanted, away. He wanted you to have half. He wanted you to have half. He it. wanted me to have and, half. And to, to this day, he still do it. He thought that you were going to come and help us and be awesome. And, and, and I've always felt like you were like the missing 
element on the Jocelyn's Cabaret. Um, but we got something going. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely, we, we, we'll come back. But I have to say this, I want people to know, because I the purpose of doing these interviews is for people to really understand the person behind the personality. A lot of people don't get it. It's always a person behind the personality. The personality is the work. The person is the person. I am not my personality. I'm not my personality. Yes, I have a lot of my personality in me as, a, as the person, but I'm not that. I'm a real person. I cry real tears. I hurt real pain. I bleed the same way, you know? Uh, I, feel like I, I feel like I've always been cool at showing my true feelings on the camera, but then again, I've been doing camera really my whole teenage years. Mm -hmm. I met you when I was 23, going on 24. That's a teenager. I spent my whole 20s on camera. I spent my whole 20s on camera. So that means I've been, I'm going, on, I'm on my second decade of being behind the camera. I look amazing. You look good. Now Which listen. It's hard for a lot of bitches to keep up. <laughs> do you still watch, <laughs> do you watch Love and Hip Hop? Right now? I do not watch Love and Hip Hop, but I will say this, when I'm on Instagram or when I'm on Twitter or on TikTok and I see the video, I'm always, you know, Looking, because I, obviously I want to know, I want to see my daughters. <laughs> you know, I, I want to see my daughters. I want to see my daughters working. I want to see what they're bringing to the table. I want to see how I taught them. And I want to see how their hygiene and their hair and their makeup and their shoes and everything, their jewelry. I want to see my work through them. Not just with them, but with the little artists that make music and do this mm -hmm. and do that. They all my, I birthed all them hoes. I push them bitches out of my pit. And they know it. They can't wake up without thinking about what I put on, what I did. I mean, I've been giving fashion for 15 years. I've been giving mug for 15 <laughs> years. I've been teaching people how to get the money for 15 years. They don't take notes, I teach. But they might not take the notes, but I teach. I'm a owner of something pretty phenomenal. A lot of people don't get the chance to say that. With your help, let me, my husband, Melissa, Melissa, certain people in my life, I've been able to do that. A lot of people can't say that. A lot of people are going to sit on your couch, cry, about how big they think they should be, or I should be here, or I should be there. I'm not crying about none of that, because if I want something, I'm gonna get it. I'm not comparing myself to the next bitch. That bitch ain't me. That bitch ain't motherfucking the princess. This bitch right here is the one. Now, there is a time, and there's levels to this shit. I hate a bitch that gonna sit on your couch and act like she's supposed to be somewhere where she's not supposed to be at. Bitch, a bitch that's before you is before you for a reason. It ain't your turn. Now while you're sitting up here and crying on the couch and having the tears and you deserve it and you deserve that, bitch, you sound like Mama D. <laughs> we don't give a f and we're not here to hear about what you deserve. We wanna see what you're doing. And that's the difference between me and a lot of reality stars. They sit up here and they cry to you on the car. I'm not about to come in here and cry to you unless it gets something emotional to do with my mom or my mm -hmm. kid or my husband or anything of that matter. But I'm not going to cry to you, no. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and what I've been doing and how life is so great. Because a lot of bitches want to cry and, and, and act like it's somebody else fault and pointing the fingers. But do you ever take any responsibilities for what you've done or where you at in life? Is that how you feel about some women who either started before you or even after you? Um, I feel like that about all of, all of them. All of them. All of them. They, a lot of them, 99% of them are not doing anything with their lives. It's your fault. Can't nobody come and take you. You can call your friends. I've called Carlos. Carlos is the reason why I got the camera right. Bitch, I made a phone call. One phone call got me to be here. Make the right phone calls. Use your right friends. Mm -hmm. And get the right things done. 
If you write, if you really got true friends and you really think about who you can call, Carlos, you know, I've been knowing you for almost 20 years. I call you any day, anytime. And who gonna tell me I can't? No, that is true. But you know what's so funny? I will say this. A lot of people think white <laughs> is right and they, they're searching for the approval of the white man, right? And one thing I will say one about- One thing I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna say, I'm no, one thing I will say about you, this is, this is no joke aside. Because what you said is true. If you have the right friends who you know can do it, call them. When you called me and said, I got an idea, I'm like, what you got? Because my thing was, you literally are one of a kind. There's no one like you. Anybody is, is, is happy to be in business with you. And I really want people to know, you are one of the smartest business women that I know because you have this bravado and you have this confidence, but at the same time, you also know, I gotta work to make sure I get what I need. And you have been doing that since Love & Hip Hop. Going back to that show, when you say you look at stuff, are you surprised to see that Rashida is still on the show? Yes. Why? Because I think she's beyond, she's like past that. It's been, I, I hate to say that Love & Hip Hop is beneath her, but he, I think it is. Like, if they tell me to come back to Love & Hip Hop and do a couple of episodes, I'll probably go get a couple of dollars, but I'm not gonna be there every day like making that my business and making that my storyline and making that my life. Honestly, it brings years and, and age to her life. Beautiful woman, very smart. But sometimes you gotta know when to say enough is enough. Mm. She don't have the man had a baby on her on camera. She don't went through so much. I would've went under the mother run and never came back up. At least left this bitch ass. Keep safe. If I'm a with you bitch, ain't nobody gonna know. You can still be my husband in the dark, bitch, in the basement. <laughs> but I'll be in the light, bitch. You, bitch, you claim you're dead, ho. Let's bury you. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I am doing a whole funeral on you, Kurt, bitch. You are dying, okay? You had a heart attack and you're dead, bitch. Now you live in the basement and I only, bitch, you see me in the house. <laughs> you Not feel the me? Movie misery, you're bitch, the basement. you heard me, okay? We're not doing that. No way. Like, it's 20 years later. Grow up. Get a job. Get a career. Get an ownership. Get you some good in your life. It's all about sex and money. Let's just be real. The older that I get, the more I want to get fucked. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sexuality is like coming to me, right? Because you, you, because the thing is, you started out when you were 23, but if you feel the hottest and best right now, I'm assuming. Yes, because you, better than before, better than any age, 25 or 26 or 27, 30. Now is where I'm gonna need my prize. My tastes so good right now. Like I was playing with last night, I called my husband on the FaceTime. I was like, babe, hurry up and get home. I want you to pound town. <laughs> my booty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you and my very pink. Well, we saw all of the pictures you sent. <laughs> I needed the word to see, yeah, baby. Honey. Are you surprised that Carly's still on the show? Carly likes to get money, so I'm not. But what I am surprised is that she ain't married yet. And locked down no real man. I think she's a beautiful woman. She so is. the box must not be right. The bitch needs some tuning. Maybe she needs a rejuvenation. That's a good gift to get the bitch. <laughs> Y'all still friends? Maybe for Christmas. Yes, send we her are. Gift. Send her rejuvenation. You want me to send Carly a box of rejuvenation? Yeah, well, uh, 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 like, a, 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 like gift, a gift card? A gift card? Yeah, it's gonna cost you like five grand, but it's a good gift. That's it's how much it costs? Maybe like 10, 20. I don't know how much it rejuvenation. My put in there yet. I don't gotta rejuvenate my shit yet. My shit's still ticking and it's still tight and it's still like to get fuck and it's cute and you know, I like to do bad things. So I don't know about Carly, but uh, I just feel like she, she gonna get her money and that's good, get your money. But girl, go up, like, come on. It's time for your daughter to be there now. Cause she got a grown daughter. Mm -hmm. Let your kid do it. So you feel like Carly should pass a torch to her daughter. 
you take the reins of being a love of hip hop, I'm gonna retire. Yeah. Manage her. Never wanna put the mother stripper heels up. Like, hey, they dusty. Hang them up. What are your thoughts on K. Michelle? I don't think. I'm happy she's safe and sound. That's safe she and sound. To, after she had to get all the semen out of her ass, she's safe and sound. Okay. It's a good thing. I don't hold any grudges, so I would send the best wishes to everybody. Even the bitches that don't like me. Did you feel that some of the Love & Hip Hop cast members just thought they were above you? Or did, or do you think- They, they knew I was above them. Okay. Oh. And Mentally and physically, because obviously they're not doing shit and I'm doing everything. So they knew from the get-go that I was above them when it came down to not just like in the physical, I'm not above anybody. I'm, just, I'm a human like everybody else. But I feel they knew that I had more, uh, I, I was gonna strive more than them and they just always gave me a hard time because they knew I was a striver. They knew that, you know, they could tell me anything and I was still gonna push hard to be successful like I am now. Do you feel Cardi B has the career you wanted? Hey, Raindrops. Stay tuned for part two of my exclusive interview with Jocelyn Tuesday, September 12th at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern.